Now let's learn about the greatest common factor and factor by grouping. Factoring is one of those big deals that will follow you around no matter what math class you take. From here on out, you will be expected to know how to factor, okay? It's usually a prerequisite skill for every math class beyond this math class. So it's also not something that you may get right away. It does take practice, and with practice becomes it becomes easier and easier. So don't give up. Keep on trying. And um, and I promise you'll get this. So what is factoring? Well, up until now, we've been multiplying factors together to get products. Okay. And so now, and again, factors, here's a factor, here's a factor. And whenever we multiply this times this, we get a product. Multiplying is going from this side to that side from this side to this side. Factoring is going from this side to this side. So we're working backwards, okay? So we're going from 56 to writing down what the factors are, okay? So the greatest common factor, and notice the key word here is actually greatest, all right? So a lot of people, <clears throat> whenever I say find the greatest common factor, they find a factor, but it may not be the greatest common factor. And so if I say GCF or greatest, that means I'm looking for the biggest factor that these things have in common. If I want to find the greatest common factor of 54 and 36, there's a couple of different ways to do this, and there's a lot of people that would argue that, oh, my way's better. I don't think that one way is better than the other. I think that however you understand it is the best way. So I'm going to show you a couple of different ways to find the greatest common factor, and you decide which one is better for you, okay? So the first way is let's find all the prime factors, okay? And I always start with, if it's even, I start with 2, okay? So what times 2 would give me 54? 27. Now, 27 is a prime. By the way, I circle my primes whenever I find them, okay? So you do need to be familiar with prime numbers. 27 is not prime. So I what can be multiplied to make 27? Well, 3 and 9. Well, 3 is prime, but 9 isn't. Okay, and then three and three for nine. Okay, so once you get to a place where you've circled both numbers, you've found all of your factors, okay? So 54 can be written as, oops, two times three times three times three, okay? <clears throat> 36 can be written as, let's see here, two times 18, two is prime, two times nine, three times three, okay? And so 36 can be written as two times two times three times three, okay? Now, what do they have in common? Well, let's see here. They both have at least one two, so we can write that down. Now, notice this guy has an extra two, but this one doesn't, okay? So you can only pull out what they have in common. They both have, this one has three threes, but this one only has two threes. So I can only pull out two what they have in common, okay? And so their GCF is two times three times three, which is two times three is six, six times three is 18. So our GCF is 18. Okay, so this is one method. Let me erase this. If you are still writing down, you might wanna hit pause because I'm gonna erase this page. Okay, another way to do this, and this is probably the way that I have always done this, oops, is I just write down what the factors are of each of these. So 54, I start with one, one times 54, okay? So there's two of the factors, two and 27, right? Three goes in, three and what times three gives me 54? Uh, 18. Four won't go in, five doesn't go in, and then six 
and 9. Okay, so that's all of them. That's all the factors of 54. Then I want to list the factors of 36. 1 and 36, 2 and 18, 3 and 12, 4 and 9, and then 6. Okay, <clears throat> these are all the factors of 54 and 36. Okay, now what is the biggest number that they have in common? Uh, 27, there we go, right there. I always start from the right and work my way left. So 18. So they both have 18 in common. So that's just another way to find your GCF. Um, this is this method right here is my preferred method. It doesn't have to be yours, okay? Um, you will start seeing these quicker the the more that you do them, okay? Now the other thing I want to point out here is that check this out. They both have nine as a factor. And so some people will be like, oh, it's nine, GCF is nine. No, 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 the GCF is not nine. It is a factor that they have in common, but it's not the greatest common factor. So whenever I say GCF, remember that key word there is greatest, which would be 18 in this case. All right, so if we want to factor the GCF out of two expressions, factor each coefficient into primes, um, I'm not sure that I really like step one. I feel like it's um, a little bit overkill. I'm going to show you how to get around step one if you don't pull out the greatest number. Um, uh, but it does add a step at the end. Okay, so if you want to read through this, go right ahead and, um, and then we'll work on this in just a second. All right, so if you want to find the greatest common factor of 27x cubed and 18x to the fourth. Okay, so what I ask myself is I always go to my smallest one, okay, because I know that I can't pull anything bigger than an 18 out of this number, right? So I start here at my smaller number, and I ask myself, what is the biggest factor of the smallest number that also goes into 27, okay? I know 18 will not go into 27. I know it, okay? So what's another factor? Um, how about 9? Does 9 go into 27? Yeah, totally does, okay? So 9 is going to be our GCF of the numbers. Now check out your X's. I've got three of them here and I've got four of them here. Notice I can't pull four X's out of three, right? The most I can pull out of either one of these is three, okay? So we would have nine X to the third is our GCF. All right, let me show you something real quick. So what if, what if we had said <clears throat> that 3x squared was our GCF? Well, what you if you divide this by 3x squared, you end up with, let me just write this down here. You end up with 6x squared. If you divide 27x to the third by the same number you think is the GCF, you end up with 9x. Now, look what's left over. 9 and 6, did they have something in common? They totally do. They have a 3 in common, okay? So whenever your left over business has also a common factor, that means you did not pull out the GCF, okay? We'll practice more with this in just a second. Find the GCF of 4x squared y and 6xy cubed. Okay, so look at the numbers first. What's the biggest number that I can pull out of 4 and 6? Well, it's 2, right? So 2, check out your x's. I've got two of them here, and I've only got one here. I can't pull two out of this one. I can only pull one out of that one, so that means we can only pull one of these out. 
check out your Y's. I've got one here, but three here. I can't pull three Y's out of this guy. He's only one. So our GCF is 2XY. All right, let's find the GCF of 21X to the third power, 9X squared, and 15X. So it has to be the greatest common factor between three of the numbers, not just two of them, okay? So what's the biggest number that can go into all three of these? Again, I start with my smaller one. Can I pull a 9 out of that evenly? Nope. 15 divided by 9 is not a whole number. Same thing with 21. Okay, so what's another factor of 9? The next biggest factor. It's going to be 3, right? So I can pull a 3 out of that. Can I pull a 3 out of this? Yes. Can I pull a 3 out of this? Yes. Okay, so my GCF is 3. We know that part. Okay, check out your X's. I've got three X's here. I've got two here, and I've only got one here. I can't pull three out of this guy. Remember, go to your smaller one. Always go to your smaller number, okay, or your smallest variable. I can only pull one out, so that means that my GCF can only have one X in it. There we go. We're done. All right, so this page is just a reminder of how we multiply using the distributive property because we're actually going to, going to be going from this right here to this up here, okay? So you, to, to multiply 2 times x, you get 2x. 2 times 7, you get 14. We can't combine these because they're not like terms. This was just a reminder because, again, we're going to be going from here to here. Which is also just a reminder of the distributive property using all variables. Some people have an easy time reading things like this. Some people don't. So if this page bothers you, go back to this page. All right, but if, if you like things like this, you might want to put this in your notes. All right, now we're down to the nitty gritty. Okay, so let's look at this. We're going to factor this guy right here. All right, so let's look at each term, the 4 and the 12. What is the greatest factor that 4 and 12 have in common? If you say 2, you're not quite there. You have not found the greatest one yet, okay? So ask yourself, the greatest factor of 4 is 4, okay? Ask yourself always, does the that number 4 go into evenly this number over here? And yes, it does. So our GCF is actually 4. So do they both have Xs that I can pull out as my GCF? Uh-uh. Nope, this one has an X, but this one doesn't. So my GCF does not include an X, and that's okay. All right, so then ask yourself, what times 4 would give me 4X? Well, that has to be an X right there, right? And what times 4 would give me a positive 12? Well, it would be a positive 3. There we go. We just factored it. Now, you always want to check your work. 4 times x, go ahead and distribute back out. Even if you just do it in your head, 4 times x is 4x. Yep, 4 times 3 is positive 12. Okay, we did good. Page is just a step-by-step -step on what we just did on the last page. So, again, if you're a person that wants to have this in your notes, you might want to hit pause and write this down. And I just want you to know that we can use the word factor as a noun or a verb, okay? And so noun is, um, it's used as a noun when we say that 7 or something is a factor of 14. It's used as a verb when I tell you to actually do something, like factor 3 from this, okay? So just so you know, it can be used as either one. So let's factor our GCF out of this thing right here, what do they have in common? Well, it looks like they both have a 5 in common, right? So I'm going to factor out the 5. Do they both have an A in common? Uh -uh, they do not. So my GCF, which is sitting out front, will not have an A with it, okay? So now, what times 5 would give me 5A? Well, A, right? Okay, what times 5 would give me 5? Don't lose your head here. You know this answer. It's 1. 
Okay. A lot of people have a tough time with that. It's so funny because you're thinking on a higher level and you're not thinking of one times a number. Five times A gives you five A. Five times one gives you five. All right, we did good. So look at this. What do 12 and 60 have in common? Okay, again, go to your smaller number and ask yourself, what's the, G, um, the greatest common factor of 12? Well, it's 12, right? Then ask yourself, does 12 go into 60 evenly? Mm -hmm. It sure does. So that means 12 is the number part of our GCF. Can we pull an X out of both of those? No, this guy doesn't have an X, okay? So we cannot pull an X out. So what times 12 would give me 12 X? X. And what times 12 would give me minus 60? That would be a minus five, okay? Now, in your head, 12 times X is 12 X, yep. 12 times minus five is negative 60, right? So that's it, we did good. So this is our final answer here. So what if there are three terms? That's okay, totally fine. Again, do what I've been telling you to do this whole time. Go to your smallest one and ask yourself, what is the greatest common fact, or what is the greatest factor of four? The greatest factor of four is four, okay? Can I pull four out of 24 evenly? Yes. Can I pull four out of 28 evenly? Yes. Okay, so our GCF is four. There's two Y's here. There's only one Y here, but there's no Y's here. So I cannot pull a Y out of these. Okay, so what times four would give me four Y squared? Y squared, right? What times four would give me a positive 24 Y? plus six y. And then what times four would give me a positive 28 plus seven, okay? And we can't add these guys together because they're not like terms. This right now is as good as we're gonna get. At some point I'll show you what else you could do with this, but for now this is where we're gonna leave it. All right, we're gonna pull out the GCF again. So take a look at the five and the negative 25. What's the largest factor between five and negative 25? Well, what's the greatest factor of five? It's five, right? Can I pull five out of this one evenly? Yes. All right, so we're gonna factor out five. Check out your X's. I've got three of them here, but only two of them here. I can only pull out the smallest number, so I'm gonna factor out a five X squared, okay? What times 5x squared would give me 5x to the third power? Well, I need one more x, don't I? And then what times 5x squared would give me negative 25x squared? And that would be minus 5. Okay, now again, this is done, but you want to multiply it back out and make sure. 5x squared times x gives me 5x to the third. 5x squared times negative 5 gives me negative 25x squared. Yep. We did good. All right, let's look at these. Okay, so we've got 21x to the third minus 9x squared plus 15x. Go to your smallest number and ask yourself, what is the greatest factor of nine? Well, it's nine, but I can't pull a nine out of 15 evenly. 15 divided by nine is not a whole number, right? Okay, so what's my next largest factor of nine? It's gonna be three, right? Can I pull a three out of that? Yes. Can I pull a three out of that? Yes. Can I pull a three out of that? Yeah. Okay. So we're going to pull a three out. Now look at your X's. I've got three here, two here, one here. You can only pull the smallest one out, right? Okay. So what times three X would give me 21 X to the third power? That would be seven X squared. What times 3x would give me negative 9x squared? Okay, minus 3x. What times 3x would give me a positive 15x plus 5? I don't need any more x's. I've got plenty. All right, there we go. And again, in your head, multiply these out. 
make sure you get that, multiply this and this, and make sure you get that, multiply this and this, and make sure you get that. Sometimes you have more than one variable, and that's okay too. All right, I look at my smallest number, eight, okay? So what's my largest factor of eight? It's eight, but I can't pull an eight out of 12 evenly, or I can't pull an eight out of 20 evenly either. All right, so what's our next largest factor of eight? It's four. Can I pull a four out of this evenly? Yep, can I pull a four out of this evenly? Yes, okay, so four is our number part. Our M, I've got three here, two here, one here. Remember, you can only pull out the smallest one. Look at your N's. I've got one here and I've got two here, but I don't have any here. So N is not part of our GCF, okay? All right, so now what times 4M would give me 8M to the third? That would be a 2M squared. Okay, remember, I have one here. I need a total of three. That means I needed two more right there. Okay, now what times 4M would give me a minus 12M squared N? Ooh, okay, so I need a minus sign. I need a three. How many M's do I need? I only need one more, and I need an N. Okay, pay attention. All right, what times 4M would give me a positive 20MN squared? Well, let's see here. I need a plus sign and a five. I don't need an M because I already have one here and they only have one right there, but I do need two Ns. And there you go, we're done. Again, multiply it back out and make sure that what you have right here times this gives you that, and this times this gives you this, this times this gives you that. When your leading coefficient is negative, you have to um, factor out a negative, okay? So that's, that's crucial for what we're going to be doing next. So make sure when that leading coefficient is negative, make sure you factor out a negative number. Okay, so 8 and 24, what's the biggest number, biggest factor of 8 is 8. Can I pull 8 out of 24 evenly? Yep. They don't both have y's, so I'm not going to use y in my GCF. What times negative 8 would give you negative 8y? positive y. What times negative 8 would give you a negative 24 plus, oops, plus 3? Okay, remember because a negative times a positive is a negative. That's good. All right, we're done. Again, we have a leading coefficient that is negative, so we're going to factor out a negative here. Oh, I wrote down the negative six part. Is that okay? You think that's right? Negative six? Yeah, okay, six is the largest factor of six and I can pull that out of there, so we're good. All right, look at your A's. I've got two here, but I only have one here. So that means I can only pull one out. All right, so what times negative six A would give me negative six A squared? Well, that's just plain old A. And what times negative 6a would give me a positive 36a? Well, that would be a minus 6. And again, multiply that out. This times this, does it give you that? This times this, does it give you this? Yes. All right. This one is a little bit tougher to see, but here's what I want you to do. I want you to take a look at, consider this one factor and consider this another factor, okay? What do they have in common? They've got a Q plus seven in common, okay? If I take out the Q plus sevens, I factor those out, what am I left with? I'm left with that, right? Okay, so now we've just factored this. This is a stretch and this one is a tough concept to see but I promise it'll get easier, I promise. And yes, I did factor this correctly. 
right, so what we just did was called factoring by grouping, okay? And um, I'm about to show you in the next page how to do that on your own because sometimes that's hard to see. All right, so let's move on. Okay, so again, I'm going to show you the way that I've always done this whenever I factor by grouping. I always underline my first two terms and underline my last two terms. I am going to be looking at these two terms separately from these two terms, okay? So I'm going to ask myself, what do these two things, what's their GCF, what do they have in common? Well, they don't have, this one doesn't have a coefficient number, right? So they both only have a Y in common. Okay, and what times Y would give me XY? Well, it would be X. And then what times y would give me a positive 3? All right. Now, if this is a plus right here, you bring down a plus. If it's a minus, you bring down a minus. It's important that you write it, though. Okay? Don't just leave it blank. All right. Now, what do these two guys have in common? They have a 2 in common. What times 2 would give you 2x? x. And then what times 2 would give you 6? All right. Now, remember that last problem whenever I said consider this as one factor and consider this as another factor? What do they have in common? They've got an x plus 3 in common. So we're going to factor out the x plus 3. That gets rid of that and that. And what are you left with? You're left with y plus 2. Guess what we just did? We just factored this original problem right here. This will get easier, but it does take practice. My recommendation, write these steps multiple times. It'll eventually become second nature to you. Example, we're going to factor by grouping again. So underline the first two terms, underline the last two terms. What do these two guys have in common? They have only an X in common. What times x would give me x squared? x. What times x would give me a positive 3x plus 3? Now, remember what I said earlier. If this is a plus, you bring down a plus. If it's a minus, you bring down a minus. But don't ignore it. You've got to write it down. Okay? What do these two guys have in common? They've got a 2 in common. What times negative 2 would give you a negative 2x? That would be just an x. And then what times negative 2 would give you a negative 6 plus 3? All right, now check that out. They've got this and this in common, so we're going to factor out the x plus 3s. That gets rid of that and that. And what are you left with? x minus 2. There we go. We just factored it. All right, that's it for this lesson. We will be doing more of this. Practice with these, write them over and over again until you're comfortable with them, and uh, I promise it'll get easier.